Well, it's Brett Allen here, and we're chatting with the wonderfully talented Parvish, Tina, about a few different projects, but the big one is sometimes they think about dying, uh, which right. is a fantastic film. And then, of course, Shining Veil vale and all the other projects. I would be remiss without talking about Outsourced because that was such a good show. Uh, but we'll save that. Yeah, I see. I saw mug. that. That's what made me. Try the mug. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. But let's talk about this beautiful, beautiful film. Sometimes I think about dying. How did you become involved with it outside of the traditional, you know, maybe a, a letter from your management or your your, your agents? Like what interested sure. you in it? Well, Brett, I'm a TV guy. You know, I I make my bread and butter in TV, episodic, recurring. It's I love it. I love serialized TV, um, animation, even voiceover. It's like I like a I like an arc. You know, we like a binge. So I don't even think about movies that much anymore. I just don't. I mean, like I know maybe pandemic life of like give me give me five seasons worth of something versus two and a half hours of investment. Like I'm ready to invest. So. This I I don't think about myself as like going doing a lot of features and th- this was though one of those like out of the blue letter from the manager agent like I had worked with one of the producers Dory Rath on a Haley Joel Osment film that my friend Isaac Feeder directed uh, called Sex Education it's on Netflix Glenn Miller's in it and a great little romp of a film and it you know it's kind of like Haley Joel in his adult like you know schlocky, schlubby, everyday man guy that we see him now. So anywho, I'd worked with Dory before and I think that they were looking for kind of a Parvesh China type. And it's one of those things like you hear on Broadway, like Donna McKechnie showing up for an audition for a Donna McKechnie type. And they still didn't cast her. But I was so like, this is one. And they just reached out and I'm like, please, of course, yes. And it was a combination of, hello, Miss Daisy Ridley. Love, love, love her. And then Dave Merhedge was also attached. And Dave, we love from Rami. And my partner was on board with Rami before I was. So it was just like, when you have those two, that combination. And it was filming in Oregon, where my partner is from. So we just had a lovely time there. It just, it was a great confluence of just wonderful people too. And the director, Rachel Lambert, knows one of my dear playwright friends, Matt Smart, from college. So, you know, like when, okay, I, I usually go into a project thinking I'll know one or two people. I just do. I feel like I'm a people guy. I've been around a long time. But when like five, six, seven, eight connections happen, it was just kind of meant to be. And I'm very excited. I haven't seen the film. So I'm I'm really excited for the Sundance premiere. Yeah. And I think that's very special that it's going to get that attention from Sundance, you know, which I think is very cool. And of course, Dave Merhej, we've had him before as well. We love him. He's just so talented. Isn't he a gem? He's the best. Just, yeah. And and I feel Canadian like he's gentleman. just so smart. Yeah. I loved him. And I, I'm i always just nervous. I don't dance in the world of stand-up too much anymore. All my stand-up friends are improviser friends. You know, not the true road-tested, tour-bound kind of stand-ups that Dave is. And the last time I saw Dave in person was literally like we were crossing each other at LAX. I was coming back, I think from Puerto Rico filming the resort and he was touring and he just yelled at me. And I think we even did the hug over like the TSA line. And he just gives you a sense of like joy and warmth every time you think of him and talk of him. So I'm so excited to spend time with him at the fest. And also I'm seeing his like stand up in LA right when we get back too. That's very cool. So when you're working on something to get this type of recognition for a film festival, because that's a big (laughs) one has to be almost, it has to be satisfying and really just good confirmation that, Hey, this is something that we are meant to be doing as a project. There is my partner dressed up our first year of dating as like a film festival goer, like a guy with like, 20 lanyards and like four cups of coffee and everything, you know, and right. And, and I told Eric, like, Eric, this festival Sundance is the festival that we, that all other film festivals like make fun of and have kind of set that bar, especially, you know, in America. And 
I actually, this will be my third time attending Park City's Sundance Slamdance. I had a film in Slamdance back in 2015, Blood Sucking Bastards, which was like a vampire office comedy. Pedro Pascal was the big bad. And so it is just, it, it, even that, that was such a joy. And I do have an animated film in Slam Dance this year called Unicorn Boy. Yeah. But it is very, I would be remiss if it wasn't such an honor to also be in Sundance as just an actor too. Like I'm not a producer or a writer, or hired gun. I just get to do my, like my number one art, my number one craft. I love that. So at this point in your career, you've done a lot of different things. We've obviously television is important for you. Film, you know, you do here and there, you do the voiceover, Mm -hmm. but what do you look for specifically in a project? And what is it that's important to you to decide, okay, this is something that I want to commit my time to as an actor and as a storyteller, so to speak. There's so many levels of commitment. There's the commitment you have to give, like when I need to pay rent, you know, I I have, you know, taxes are due. And those kind of one-offs, I still live in the world where an actor first is a chameleon. And I love, Brett, that you said storyteller, because at the fundamental, what any of us do, from reality TV to podcasts to the first cavemen talking about the hunt, you know, relating it back over the fire, like I caught the biggest bull today. Let me tell you all about it. Right. Mm -hmm. I still love that, you know, that, that acting, like that storytelling is key. If I don't have a problem with it, like some ethical, like any other, like real, I have very few religious or political things I won't do. I'm never going to do anything far right wing anti uh, in, in uh, equality of people I, that's just that goes without saying now everything else it's a fine line as an actor because it, where i might not agree with that as a story i love that as an actor like why i want to play that part then like mm-hmm. why because Par- parvesh you know, wants to be liked you know so it is nice in some parts that you can play again set but you're right at the end of the day there's some parts when you just need to make money and then ju- happily the longer that they want you on a project is usually a good thing. You have a bigger role. You have, you're producing it. You're, you've co-written it with friends. And in those cases, the fact that you're already so invested means that you're already giving it all your time and your wherewithal. And you'll happily do a rookie fed guest star in between because you are free that week or your, you know, your parents are visiting and they'd love to come see your multi-cam back before when they had live audiences. I think they're still coming back. But, you know, it was always a treat to do a multi-cam when your families or friends are in town to give them that LA experience. So uh, moral of the story, Brett, moral of that question, I have no principles. I'll do m- mainly anything. But <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> You're like actor for hire here. Um, but that's hey, good, though, that you right? the because you are established. You... Please. No, no, go ahead. You, you're established, but you haven't given up that work ethic, basically, is what I was going to say, as far as you're willing to work on something that means something. And Brett, especially like if it's a project that you did not, if you have the joy to not audition for something that even pays decently well, but that a friend of yours thought of you out of all the thousands of artists, actors, you know, folks out there, they thought of you to help interpret and tell their story. I find that high praise. I find that like, if I'm available and it's not say that you're only, you can't pay me. We're doing this out of like blood, sweat and tears and it's still union okayed. All right, can you shoot me on Friday? Because Thursday I'm actually shooting a a gum commercial that might pay for half my year. So please, can you just do me Friday and I'm yours? Like, I love that ability to tell people's stories because I come from like ensemble. It's always like, it's not alone. We None of us do this art alone. Like we live on favors and begging and, you know, I'll get you back next time or I have a project next time for you to be in it. But please, I need you to help me assist and direct. Like that's, there's a that camaraderie among, if you can find like-minded artists. I have like a good group of Indian American actors who I kind of grew up with from Chicago to LA. And even like my current theater company, I am a theater ensemble. Like I feel like those are the folks who I'd like, okay, let's go, let's go do a a show in the park this weekend. You know, like 
you have people that you trust and you'll just always go to bat for. And if you can all make money doing it, isn't that just the game? Isn't that why like Adam Sandler and his friends make movies so they can yeah. hang out <laughs> together and have a good time? That's very cool. Nothing and wrong with just, that. yeah, not at all. And as a sidebar, it's funny you said the multicam sitcom thing is definitely an LA experience, I think. People right? come to LA. I mean, I've done it several times. It's just part of coming to Los Angeles. Oh, let's go see a taping of XYZ. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And get that experience of, because I think people are to a point, very obsessed with your world and your business and just find it extremely fascinating. I think so for me too, to yeah. a point, that's why I do this. So it's like, sure, there's a solve there. We have the art form, or not even art. Forget about the art. This profession, this job is public. Yeah. This, um, I don't go in, we don't go into our accountant's office and like cheer him on and, you know, like get that last zero over the decimal point, like a football game or like, you know, applauding after an opera. Some people's work is private. Other people's are, are meant to be shared and discussed and entertained. So we have like an any city all over the world has their local theater, their local commercials, their local TV. Something still happened that this little corner of America, Southern California and Hollywood has for the long time, you know, it's changing as, you know, the world has gotten more global with entertainment, but it dictated a lot of what we saw out in the world. You know, think of it from like blue jeans to Michael Jackson and Madonna to, you know, just the influence of American pop culture is so prevalent. And I never even understood until I like started visiting India as a child or like Europe. And I was like, how do you know everything about us? But I don't know everything about like Bollywood music, you know, like Mm -hmm. even now it's even at a greater proliferation. So many friends have seen RRR on Netflix, you know, like it's part of common lexicon now, but for a while it wasn't. So I get the obsession. I was obsessed with it as a kid. That's why I wanted to work in it. You know, I finally had the excuse to tell any teacher or my mom, like, stop watching TV. You know, that's not your job. And I'm like, well, no, actually, my job is to make sure I watch at least one or two episodes of every TV show out there. Just to know what is being said, who is making culture. Yeah. I mean, that's the same for myself. I find myself just watching so many different things and just obsessed with it. And then finding myself intrigued to the point where I'm like, I would love to have this person on my show, such as yourself. That's why I said when the opportunity came, because I've been a fan, whether it be theater or film or television of yours. uh, And we joked a little bit at the beginning about outsource, but I remember that show very well. It was so smartly written uh Dietrich Bowder I mean just it was a massive cast and then all of a sudden it ended do you do you have positive familiarity with that show still I mean it's been so long since it's been on but oh there we go (laughs) there we go nice we we just repainted and so I need to I'm this is this is the signed one I'm bringing it up and everything I'm gonna put it up there um Rizwan is coming with me to see Dave Merhedge's show because I want them to, I'm friend dating them. Um, ben Rappaport, I'm going to see him and Sean, he and Sean Hayes are doing, I think the, I forget, I don't know the details. It's that Jack Parr, maybe okay. some 1950s talk show. It's Good Night Oscar. He's on Broadway. I'm going to go see in April. Like these are still my dearest friend. I saw Anisha was my last, she was in Cabaret. Uh, Cabaret Company with Patty Lupone. I saw that. And these are still like my dear friends. Talking to Sasha, even in UK, like in literally, you know, I think we have a phone date on the 25th. Diedrich still to this day has given me some of the best advice of how to navigate this career as a voice actor, a comedic actor, because these are just dear friends. I have, I owe Ken Quapis an email, our, you know, our director. I'm making that note, Brett. Because I in Quapus of The Office, I mean, that was a good show. I mean, you, everything you've done, everything I feel, has been less. really good. Uh, but I, I just, I remember that show. That was like a weekly date to watch TV and to really see something that was smartly written. But I think everything that you've done to a, is very good as far as 
not just yourself, but just the writing and, and everything. You choose good projects, including this South by Southwest film. It's a big deal. Um, when does it become available, generally speaking, for people to watch and to stream? Well, what they're doing for Sundance uh, for Sundance this year, because of, I think the last two years, they did not have an in-person right. festival. Just pandemic, right? I think they tried. And it just last minute, I think the Omicron surge. But this year, they're back. Um, and there's a lot of it that is online. Our film, sometimes I think about dying. I think you can buy a $20 online ticket and you get like the, you know, that one viewing, that one airing. It's, and I, it, I think until the end of the month, but I'm not certain, but I know that that's how some people are. I haven't seen it. So my, I will be seeing it for the first time at the world premiere. And I'm, I'm excited, but like, this is one where I'm like, oh, friends could actually see it very soon. <laughs> yeah. No nerve wracking necessarily, right? You're excited for people to watch. I, it's always a bit of both. I, I have surrendered. I am guilty. I will admit now. I don't watch everything I do anymore. Sure. Um, I just don't. I don't know why. I, I gave a good excuse for myself. Like, I was there when I filmed it. I remember. Yeah, so, you're like, I was there. <laughs> right. Like, Mythic Quest, do, doing, like, Mythic Quest, I watch. So, to, to be on a show that you watch is, like, just a bonus. And, but, like, some other shows I just haven't watched. So, like, I don't know. With a film that you have to see in the theater, especially, like, a premiere, like, you're kind of forced. And it's it's always just, like, a little nerve-wracking, that neediness of that comic actor who still wants people to like laugh at you and clap at you <laughs> you know there's that hope of it but rachel lambert the director i think her vision and i never got to work i've never been able to work with a director like this who rachel and her team they spend time they were in astoria like i think a month before wow. we came to town she does she's one of those artists those directors who wants to know the town the people show shoot B-roll footage of some, you know, like a people walking down the street or a rocking chair. So I'm, this is totally like, not like, you know, with the built in laugh, you know, built into a movie. Like it's not like one of my like laugh track uh, multicam. So like, I'm just very curious to see and get to be a part of something that I think I saw someone mention it. Nice core where like things are like kind Things are, you know, nice in the world. And I know, like, after the past few years, like, I haven't rushed. I haven't seen Chernobyl, for example. Like, I, it's too, it just seems so depressing and dark right now. Like, I <laughs> want happy, uplifting things, too. As much as I, as, as I just saw Last of Us, <laughs> the premiere. But to balance that, then I watch a lot of drag stuff online. I love it. Well, congratulations, Parvish. This is awesome. Okay. Make sure to put a link so people can connect and watch this when they get the opportunity. And again, all of your other projects, just top notch. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with us today. And, and I appreciate it very much. Oh, too kind, Brett. I can't wait to tell Dave. I'm going to say I, that you said hi. And I'll see you next time. Absolutely.